We know that fluids contain very many molecules, and we could model the fluid by considering the trajectories of each of these molecules. This sounds attractive because it is conceptually easy, however it's technically impossible because there are too many molecules to follow. For example, one might want to model all of the molecules inside the piston of this gas engine. The length of the piston is around 56 centimeters, and the diameter of the chamber is around 20 centimeters. So let's estimate how many molecules there are inside the piston. So if the length of the piston is 56 centimeters, and the diameter, well, I'll assume it's square for now and just say it's 20 centimeters squared, then the total volume, you can work this out, is 22.4 liters. Now that, of course, is one mole of molecules at standard temperature and pressure. And a mole is, of course, 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 molecules. It's worth thinking about how big that number is. If you took every single person in the world and chopped off every single one of their hairs, you would have a very big pile of hair. In fact, if it took one minute per person, it would take ten barbers working without a break for over a thousand years to achieve this. Now, if you take every single one of those hairs and chop it into one thousand little pieces, and then take every single one of those pieces and chop it into a million different pieces, then you have around 6 times 10 to the 23 pieces of hair. So this is a very, very large number. And any dream you might have had about following every single molecule around inside this piston as it bumps into the walls and into other molecules will very quickly evaporate. And because it's impossible to follow every single molecule, instead we zoom out and look at the average properties of a fluid. And we do this around points in space. First of all, I define a coordinate system. Then I look in a region of space, and I work out the average molecular velocity around this point in space. Note that this velocity is held at points in space. It is not held by the individual molecules. And we can also define the number of molecules per meter cubed. And we can define the molecular mass. And multiplying these together, gives the density. So having made that conceptual leap, we now think of the fluid as a continuum, i.e. a continuous lump of stuff with no gaps in it, and we forget about the molecules. Furthermore, we say that this continuum has a certain velocity field and density field. By field, we mean it is defined at points in space.